Might check one too. Right, guys, it's Black Man the Traveller. Yeah, I'm here with a very special guest. Um, I'm not going to introduce him. I'm going to let him introduce himself. And yeah, bow. Yeah, man, what's happening, my bro? DJ Lamlet, UK DJ. And it's nice to be here today. Thank bro. you very much. Yeah, man. How was your How was your How was your journey to come here today? How was it? Yeah, it's light, man. It's yeah. Light. Obviously, it's not too far, in it. Yeah. Currently in Hackney, so it's calm. Not bad, man. Uh, thank you for coming down to this podcast. I appreciate it. Yeah, nah, good, I really bro. appreciate it. Um, so, um, Lam, like, um, where are you originally from, then, bro? Like con- country wise. Ethnicity. I'm, I'm. My family's Indian. Yeah. I'm born and bred in East London. Okay. So uh, yeah, man. Have you ever been back home? Yeah, man. Plenty yeah. of times. Yeah. Plenty of times. Yeah, man. So my family's from Punjab. Okay. In India, and that's like, yeah, man, that's like, that's the home, isn't it? Mm. Fun enough, I'm actually, um, I'm planning to go to India next year. I did tell you before, yeah, I'm looking to go for um, at least four to five months to film mm. for YouTube. So I'm definitely going to contact you whilst, whilst I'm Yeah, there. man. India's a crazy place, like. Yeah. It's a crazy place. It's a big eye opener. It's very spiritual. Yeah. It just depends on what reasons you go there for and what you kind of want from a trip like that. Yeah. When I think of India, I think like chaos, anarchy, colours, music, food, yeah. everything. But I'm excited. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about India. I'm here to talk about you. So, um, let me ask you a question. So you're born and raised in, in Newham, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. So how was your upbringing like growing around Newham? So I grew up in East Ham. Yeah. Um, I went to Langdon School. And um, like I, I spent a lot of time in East Ham Manor Park. And then as I got older, I think when I finished school, I spent a lot of time in Plasto. Um, yeah, I went college in, I went Newvik College as well. So I, I was I was always in Newham, innit? Always East End though. Yeah, man. Because so East End, East End, like, is, is another another topic because yeah. you have, like, Tower Hamlets and then you have, like, Hackney and then yeah. you have, like, obviously East London's a big place, innit? But Newham in itself is its own kind of thing as well, innit? In how would opinion. you, how would you describe Newham from your perspective growing up as a child being there? You see what it is? When you're a kid growing up, you just think everything's normal, isn't it? You just, yeah. You, you, you just adapt to your surroundings. But as you get older, you realise like a lot of aspects of Newham was kind of like, kind of tapped. <laughs> because it's like, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit crazy when you think about like some, some aspects. I'm not, it's probably the same, same as other parts of London or the UK. But like, mm. when you look back at it, it's like, there was a lot of like, strange things about Newham but at the same time there's a lot of talented people that come out of Newham mm. and I think I think I personally think Newham has a lot of character yeah and I think that's reflective in the talented people that come out into the media in out there through the media mm. whether it's sports music entertainment a lot of people come from Newham innit? I think Newham is a is a place where it has its positive image in terms of, you know, West Ham, the Olympics being held over there and it's yeah, got its negative side. I just got my season ticket for West Ham. For West Ham, are you excited to go, yeah? Yeah, man. I still, I rep, I rep it hard because I support like, well, I'm an Arsenal fan, but okay. nah, man, I support West Ham now, man. Yeah, man, you got to keep it local. Yeah, exactly. As a child, um, what, what type of person was you like? How was you as a person? Like, how would you do? How would you describe your character? You know, as you a know person? what I lo- I loved football. Yeah, the whole time, like yeah. even up until now, I love football. Yeah, I think football is like really close to my heart. I, I I just love playing football, being being around my friends, like playing football every day. But I was just in a park. Mm. I was playing for the school team. I think man, I played a couple of games for Newham. Yeah, like. Uh, trials, all of that sort of usual stuff. And then I used to swim as well. I used to swim for Newham as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. So like... So you was very sporty. If you see me in the pool, even today, if you yeah. saw me in the pool this morning, you'd be shocked, bro. Yeah. Like I can swim in it. I can't swim, you know. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> I understand. Swim. I can't swim. There's two things I don't understand about, pe- about people. Yeah. People yeah. that don't drink enough water and people that can't swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like two thirds of us is water. So yeah. How can we not move maneuvering in what we're two thirds of? No, you're right. And number two, how are we not drinking enough water? No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you know, I try to drink enough water. You know, it's, I can swim, but I can't swim. Let's just say from here, if this wall was a bit more further, I can't swim further than that wall. I don't know. I'm weird. Oh, man. I went. I remember, like in school, obviously, like you go swimming lessons for free. And yeah, blah, 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 yeah, blah. yeah. I struggle, man. I struggle when I go holidays in the spent, beach. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the pool, man. When I was a yeah, like, I really enjoyed it. Like I used to swim in. Um, Ballam Les Centre, mm. Newham Les Centre, like all the Les Centre, Atherton, I was, I was like, 
All the ones around I the I used bottom. to swim tournaments. Yeah, they used to call them galas. I think they called galas and that. I used yeah. to swim at them all over the UK for new. So Probably one of the only Asians that used to swim. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, that's how it is, you know, when you're growing up and you start to, you know, fall in love with sports and certain yeah. things. That's the beauty of it. What made you... Um, what made you want to get involved in music, like in the DJ and industry? Like, like, what age was the first time you started to fall in love? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was really organic. Like, yeah. I didn't ever think to myself, "Oh, I'm gonna become a DJ." Yeah, I think I just had a love for music. I, um, I got two older brothers in it. Okay, and then they they always used to collect CDs. Yeah, like all kinds of music, all kinds of genres, but like obviously hip hop was my thing in it. Like. I'm talking this is the time when old school garage was popping, grime yeah. was like starting to pop. Yeah, Channel U times. Yeah, just before like the early Channel U era. Okay. Like early, and I was still a kid, do you get me? But like, I used to think to myself like, I prefer US hip hop to like UK music at that point. Cause I mm. used to listen to like Wu-Tang. I used to listen to like a lot of Dipset, Jay-Z, The Locks, D-Block, all of that sort of, Five in it. That, that was me in it and Lil Wayne. Mm. I mean, Lil Wayne's one of my favorite rappers of all time. And then like my brother had some CD CD decks, and obviously we had bare CDs in the house. So I just started I just used to mess around with them. And then yeah, I think when I was when I was finishing school and I was like sixteen, and I was like fell, I fell out of love of sports, got a bit lazy and that. I just started to enjoy music more, man. And then what age was the first time you ever, like, did you get your first decks or something? Like, how did you, how, so like, my brother how did it decks. start? Yeah, so I was probably like 15, 16 when my brother had decks. Yeah. But it was CDJs. I never, I never really, I was never on vinyl. Yeah. And then like, I think when I was like 17 or 16, 17, I started getting a couple of little local bookings. So I did like, was it St. Bonds? St. Bonds and St. Angeles, I think yeah. it was. Big up, big up St. Bonds and St. Angeles. It was their sixth form thing, like a okay. prom. Like a, yeah, 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 um, yeah, 11, when you go to 11. It was either year 11, it was like when they're finishing college. I can't remember which one yeah. it was, but yeah. I was young. Everyone was young, innit? But like, they booked me. I must have like, I don't know how much I charged, like, but it was like, something like 80 pound or something. Mm. I went there. I didn't know how to mix, innit? But the one thing I knew was like, what tunes to play in it. Okay. So like a lot of people even used to say to me, like, oh, you're like a selector because you know your music. Yeah. So I didn't really know how to mix properly, but I just knew the tunes. And I kind of grew up more on Bashment, like dancehall was more my thing in the beginning. Hip hop and dancehall was my thing. Mm. I wouldn't even say like, you know when they used to say like hip hop, R&B, like R&B was there, but it was, for me it was more hip hop, Bashment, isn't it? or dancehall. Mm. That was my vibe. So it was. So you you fell in love with the with the Caribbean and the hip hop uh, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because of energy. That was that was that was my vibe, innit? it? Yeah. So like, even on a social front, like I'd be more around that kind of vibe. That was more musically me, like. So yeah, man. That was like my comfort zone, and then obviously, like, the more I got into DJing, then I mm. started messing with more UK grime MCs at the time, and then UK rappers as well. So then naturally you start getting more into the UK scene that way, innit? Because there was like a new, it was a new scene growing mm. at that time. Do you get me? It wasn't established the way it is today. It was new. And um, at that time when the UK scene was establishing, you know, obviously certain UK musicians are coming up. Did you at that moment feel, wow, oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting involved in something that's beautiful, you know? Yeah, I'd say like, I was getting involved in something that was interesting. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. Because... Cause I started doing um pirate radio, yeah, and I remember I moved to stations, yeah, and I moved to one station. I forgot that name now, but it was in Hackney. And I remember the guy who used to run the station. He said to me, "Oh, you got mad character on the radio, like you got a good character, but like you want to compete with like Tim Westwood and that. You mm. wanna you wanna be playing American rap. Mm. Forget this UK thing. This UK thing's a waste of." energies there's no money in it it's not going nowhere because everything of course at that time everyone was listening to american music yeah but the thing was because i started connecting and networking i started going west london started going central connecting with different people that was doing music mm. like man started seeing like for example like low-key like a big political rapper today 
I, I was working with low key 2000 probably five six times Wow. Do you get me? Yeah. Early, like, we was kids. Yeah, big up Loki, man. I met him in one of the protests. Yeah, before. he's like yeah. a really nice guy. You get me? But like, our relationship goes back 15, 16, maybe even more. Mm. Years. So like, I see people like that coming through and I'm thinking, nah, man, the US ain't the only place that has rap music mm. popping. Like, the UK's got a scene that can grow, innit? it? Mm. And from, so you got involved in the... Um, in the music scene as a DJ, what made you want to start the collective uh, Chronicles Entertainment? Like, how did that go about? Oh, what the eight, uh, yeah. So I had like a, so I used to do mixtapes on the roads. So then I met Ruthless Records. That was like my family, mm. and we started doing bare mixtapes. Like we did over a hundred and something titles. Wow. We sold over half a million CDs on the streets. Half a million CDs on the streets. Yeah, man. Like we done like if you do These a, half a million CDs on the streets. Yeah, like oh, collectively. Okay, no. Fuck, you know. Yeah, man. Like, we had the whole scene coming to us. So we did like, a lot of the early gigs tapes. Big up gigs. We like, did uh, Best of Blade Volume 1. We did like, um, I had a tape called Grand Theft Auto at the time. Yeah. Chip Chip ho hosted it for me. And I remember Big up Chip. Tiny come and done me a special for that one. Like That was just before he done Pass Out as well. So that was a big time for, yeah. for, for the UK scene. It was growing. And then like, yeah, man, just bare UK artists was just like Channel U days, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So they messed with me But Chronicle was like a That was like my Asian Kind of grime collective At the time mm. So people like You know ADP who's produced Like Bestie Young and all that He's a big producer In the industry right now mm. he, he used to make beats for us Obviously Bangles We go way back with Bangles Yeah Bangles I'm doing big up Bangles yeah, as well he's from Forest Gate So he went to school With Candyman Who I do radio with now Yeah So yeah there's a lot of history there with A lot of people A lot of artists But Yeah man that, that's kind of like the foundations for me, isn't it? Yeah. So now, okay, so you've reached a certain age, now you're in the industry and now you actually, um, you know, you're doing something that you really love, yeah? Yeah. Now, while while you've been doing this for the last, like let's just say for the last 10, 15 years, have you, have you faced any challenges, like any setbacks? Yeah, man. I mean, I've been in, I've been at BBC Radio, so I've been on Asian Network 14 years doing like, UK rap so you can imagine that's a niche mm. on a station like that but I feel like when I joined the station it didn't make sense mm. to a lot of people like at the time especially in the Asian industry like why is this guy there doing that but for mm. me I always had a vision that you know what like I had people like gigs coming on my show Rich Free 2 coming in with school just spitting bars like the whole grime scene been there and, and, and that continued but I think like for me, being on an Asian platform mm. on the BBC and representing hip hop or UK rap, should I say, mm. I think for me, it's not so much about like, oh, is that Asian music? It's more like, that's what young Asian people are into now. That's right. So when you look at it now, like you go to an, you know, I get booked for an Asian wedding today yeah, and they'll, you know, I'll play like a Drake record and then I'll play like half an hour Bangra set. Yeah. I might drop a couple UK tracks yeah. and then a couple US tracks then go back to the Bangor and Bollywood. So like that that infusion is I feel like I represent that that fusion of sound and culture. Yeah. But setbacks wise, yeah man, there was there's, there was there's always setbacks. There's mm. always like things that could go better, things that go wrong. Mm. People trying to play games with your career or, or play or try to like play you that's a common thing like anyone that wants to get into this game or any game really that mm. involves a lot of time and effort you got to be prepared for like the politics and how to deal with you know the politics because that that's in every industry that's right you can't just look at the music thing and say oh shit like um you know that that game's messy i'm gonna go do something else because you're gonna get that in it everywhere mm you know, setbacks. Going back to what you said about um, being an Asian rapper, I mean, so being an Asian uh, DJ in the industry. Now, for me, I've always said this before, um, I think that the Asian community don't get the recognition that, that they deserve because, you know, you got yeah. such as yourself, you got Joy Crooks, you know, you got, um, yeah. you got Young Smokes, you know, you got Pac-Man, you got Shaker the Baker, you got a lot of people that are, you know, doing big things for the Asian community, but do you think that the Asian community are not getting the recognition that they deserve at the moment? Yeah, I think there's like a deeper um, 
system. Mm. I think there's a deeper thing going on in society where in the in, in industries, because different industries have different kind of, like you, you turn on the news, how many news reporters are Asian? Mm. A lot of them. Mm. But like, how many Asian artists are in the charts? That's right. How many Asians are playing Premier League football? That's right. And it's not down to like, oh, they're not good enough. Like, I think that's a very ignorant thing to say because... Even when I used to play football, I remember it used to be quite boxed. Like mm. there were certain things just for Asians to do, but I used to think, okay, cool, I get it. You're giving a platform for Asians to do something, mm. or are you just boxing our people into that little box there in that yeah. corner? So, like sometimes I do think like there is like a, a deeper things in society where Asians are definitely discouraged to do certain things if I'd be really honestly truthful with you. Mm. And I think like early on in my career, obviously I came through, I'd say, I'd openly say that I was probably more influenced and I came through black music than Asian music mm. growing up. And I was more into black music. I still listen to more rap music than I do anything, any other kind of music. Mm. But yeah, man, I do definitely think there is a, Somewhere along the along the along the way, there is some sort of disconnect, which I think, it, to some extent, is intentional too. Because sometimes, like I look at it like this, I'm like, man, there's a lot of people that are killing it in the game. Yeah. Right now, you know, like I just discovered that young lady called Joy Crooks, you know, and I'm just seeing that. She's yeah, just, yeah. Like, she's she's, 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 uh, she's from I think she's from Bangladesh. I think originally, you know, and she's like her, like her music is different compared to all these other musicians in the mm. industry, you know. And then you've got Pac-Man that's been doing, you know, rapping for quite a minute. You've got Young Smokes been rapping. So I'm just thinking like, these lot are killing it, but they're not getting the recognition that they deserve. Yeah. So I'm just thinking my perspective, like, it's just, it's a bit strange. I'm just saying that, you know. Yeah, I think, I think, I think like some of the names you mentioned make sense, but I think there's, there's so many artists, like I, yeah. I could name your whole list, but the thing is some of them are like, They've got their niche yeah. following, so they 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 kind of they're happy with that. I guess even for myself, I have a niche following that kind of yeah. I cater for, and that works for me. Yeah. But like with people like myself, I think having the BBC tag next to my name for so long, mm. it helps me elevate into different spaces sometimes. But I think for new new artists, new DJs, new produ uh, producers, presenters, whatever they are, whatever they're doing, whatever the talent is, whatever they want to do. I think being brown, one thing I would always say is like, you got to embrace your own people. You want your own people to get behind you because mm. your real fan base is always going to be your people. That's right. You break into the mainstream, you have a little success. It's great. But in the long run, you want your own people to like really follow you. If you don't have your own people following you and connecting with you musically, then you don't really have anything to fall back on. Mm. You get it? So yeah, man. What um when you when you wake up in the morning, what motivates you? I think just being alive, bro. You know, when you wake up and you just appreciate that I get to wake up and do what I enjoy. Mm. My family, health, you know, all these little things that play a part. But I think definitely like just being able to wake up and get up and do the things that you enjoy. I mean, that's I'm living my dream really. Like I'm very blessed in life to be in the position that I'm in. And to, and to be able to like say that I've kept that run going for like, I've been in the game 17 years, bro. It's a long time. Been in music 17 years. So like, been on the BBC for 14 years. So like for me, who is it? Someone the other day was saying saying something quite interesting because I, I had a little run on, on Radio 1. Yeah. And like, I think, I think the guy who was saying something to me like, oh, you know, there's only ever been six Asian people on Radio 1. You know, remember how long Radio yeah. One's been around? I think it's been for years. I'm sure it's been around since the 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me to be one of six, that's the, that's an achievement. Asian, South Asian people to be on that station, you know, yeah. that's an achievement. Yeah. So things like that really like motivate me to like want to go hard, but also enjoy the journey. Um, in your career, what what would you say has been the highlight so far that you can say, like? at a certain moment in your career you'd say wow like this is this is probably been one of the best moments in my life boy there's there's a lot I think joining Radio 1 was a big thing at the time I think yeah. 
just being able to do shows around the world, bro. Like, yeah. I've traveled around the world. I've done, I've been Kenya, I've been India, I've been Spain numerous times, been Greece numerous times, Germany, Holland, all over the world, really. Just being even being able to travel around the country and do shows in places that I never thought I'd even go to. Mm. Get you getting paid to go places and 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 shut it down and play bangers, bro. Like that. I mean, that's a blessing. I think. Um, I was doing a bit of acting for my boy Hamza. Hamza Arshad is like a YouTuber. Hamza Productions. I, I was doing his show with him. He was still continuing that, but. Mm. During the pandemic, he got, you know, awarded the MBE from the Queen. Wow, congratulations to Hamza, man. Big up Hamza, man. Yeah, man. And for me to, because I remember, like, it was on ITV News. And he done a little interview in there and, like, they used a the clip with me and him on the show. Did you get it? Yeah. And when I saw that, it just made me happy because I thought, rah, like, that's my bro. You get me? That's my, my guy. Mm. And, like, he's managed to get that kind of recognition and, like, coming from where we come from it's, it's hard to break through into that onto that scale and when he approached me to do that show to act in his show like a few years before that I, w- I was a bit hesitant because I'd never done anything like it mm. but he's like no nah, I got your back like I'll make make sure you look good on the <laughs> get me so to see him get an MBE off the back of that that's an achievement although it wasn't me but yeah. it was my guy get yeah. me so for me it was like a sense of achievement that yeah. you know what being part of his journey is always you know, a great thing. But yeah, man, bro, like there's so many different things happen in your career yeah. for when you've been in the game that long. So like the mixtapes. I've seen that um DJing in Dubai when I when I was doing mixtapes and people was like telling me about certain tunes off the yeah. tape, bro. Yeah. That was fucking wow, like, that's mad. I've seen that you um R. I. P man that you met Pop Smoke as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What was his energy like as a person, you know, like just being in the same room with him? Yeah, yeah. To him? he was a character, bro. Like, yeah. bearing in mind, he was only 20, innit? So he was, he, he, the thing with me, when I meet famous people like that, I, I don't really look at them as like, oh, they're mad famous. He's 20, innit? Yeah. I, like, I'm a lot older than you. So like, I give that energy kind of vibe and yeah. they that understand. That brother type of vibe. Yeah, to get it. So man was like, we really connected as people. We had a lot of jokes mm. and we was talking a lot and it's mad because we was the last show to interview him before he died. Mr. Get Peace, it? Yeah. So, you know, we was the last people to interview him before he passed away. And like, at the time, you don't think that it's going to be that, you don't think that far ahead and you don't think something like that would happen. Mm. Just thinking, right, yeah, just done an interview. One of the hottest rappers in the game. It's good vibes. Had a lot of bants. Mm. But... Yeah, I think it's a wake up call, isn't it? Like life's short, isn't it? Life's too short, man. Mm. You know, obviously you didn't deserve to die like that, but you know, it's um it's part of life, you know. But the pop smoke situation also that plays um I think social media plays a big role, you know, mm. in terms of how we live our daily lifestyle, you know, because there's a lot of things on social media that will portray people's lifestyle in this image. But obviously things happen, you know. Yeah, man. 100% bro like yeah it hits you innit mm. when something like that happens like it was, it was sad but I remember speaking to someone from the label or someone I can't remember who it was or a PR company or something mm. and they were just like yeah you know you guys were the last people to interview him like, really he's like yeah so we interviewed him he flew back yeah had his madness and that's it RIP Pope man so um, now you I see yourself, I don't just see you as a, um, I don't just see you as a DJ. Mm. I see you as an influencer. I don't know if you see that in your perspective, because obviously you've come from the same background where I come from, mm. you know, born and raised in Newham. And everyone that knows that Newham is not an easy place, you know, to grow up nah. and um, to go through certain things. And obviously to get to the level of success where you are now, I think that's a good achievement. And plus you're influencing people. Yeah. And also you do have your own platform as well, um, where I see people jumping on, that's rapping. Yeah, man. And doing so obviously I've got my YouTube channel, Lamb Lack TV, with yeah. fresh wave sessions where yeah. people can pay a small fee to do a freestyle yeah. or a session, shall I call it, because more time it is pre-recorded audio. But for me, that was just the thing that I really wanted to push during the pandemic. Because I was like, look, People are struggling out here. They ain't got nothing to do. They want to do music. They've got nowhere to really... Some people are just getting aired from every platform. Mm. Like, okay, cool. You've got to pay a little little fee to join it or do it, but it's not going to, you know, 
break your bank and it's not something that's going to hurt you in any way, but it's going to give you a platform to do something mm. that you enjoy doing. So we set that up during the pandemic more so uh, with my business partner, Mazzy. He's a bad boy videographer. So we set up our media company as well during the pandemic. So we do like social media handling for companies and restaurants and stuff. Mm. But yeah, man, that platform is there, man. It's there for up and coming still. I really, I really like it because I see there's a lot of, um, I think, is it SK? I think, it was, I think SK was in it or something like that. I think I think SK was on it. And um, I see that you're, you're putting on a lot of young, talented people to jump on. Yeah, 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 definitely, man. So I think that's very good what you're doing, bro. I think it's important, man. I think I've been in the game so long that like, it's only right that, I mean, I had RV Heady one on there like yeah. four years ago, five wow. years ago. And now look at them where they are now. Yeah, like when I see Heady doing a tune with Drake, it makes me proud, you know, yeah. and see like people like that. What, 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 um, what would you motivate? Like what words would you give up to the young generation like, for motivation that want to be in your position? What I've noticed, especially in Newham is, look, yeah. just let go of this whole street stuff, man. This whole road stuff. Because it's like, especially in the last couple few months I've seen how many young people have died from gang violence and stuff like that and I was just like yo just let go of that stuff man because it, it, it was bad when we was young as well but 100% I was one of those young people where I didn't, I really didn't and I like obviously now nah, I still don't care about it but when I was young I really didn't care about any of that stuff I wasn't on this violence thing or gang thing like I didn't understand like I didn't understand why people were so like in into that for me i was always about trying to explore new places and meet new people and connect with people and do different things like that's why i think music fit well with me because when i really got into it and i, st and I realized that, that i could connect with people outside of newham yeah. or east london and go yeah. different places and meet people that are doing music it was like an avenue to kind of Run, chat and network and meet new people but also like understand how much is going like there's not a lot going on in Newham compared to the rest of London mm. I'll be honest with you you go down to Central you go to West like there's different people doing different things mm. different people with different money bro like all this gang stuff and being real or, or whatever people think like they, how they define that stuff that stuff's it's whack, bro. Mm. It's, it's, like, what's the end result? I think the problem is with, um, I think not just him, I think the problem is with the young generation. I think social media plays the key role. The music plays the key role. Yeah. And um, I think, well, between my time and your time, we had youth centers. Like, we had places to go to, you know? Nah, sure. I think at this moment of time, the generation don't have guidance. So where there's no guidance, mm. it's going to lead to people. I think it starts be, from home. Because yeah. I, I never spent no time in no youth centre, bro. Like, yeah. I'll be real with you. Yeah, there were youth centres around. Mm. But even then, I knew a lot of men that was going youth centre in my age group was, they were on robbing each other or fighting and stuff. Mm. I was kind of lucky because I was so into sports and I was good at it. I was getting invited to, like, play for the football team or to go to this new swimming and yeah. do the swimming thing because I was good at it. So I was kind of lucky that I spent a lot of time away from people that was out on the street or going to like certain places where, you know, there could be some negative, you know, situations. But I think generally I just wasn't interested in it, bro. Like, mm. I don't know how anyone would really want to live a life like that and stick to that, bro. Like, there's so much out there, bro. Uh, you're right, it is down to guidance, but mm. that guidance starts from your home. That's right. If you haven't got the right parenting, and it's sad because a lot of kids don't have the right parents in terms mm. of like education, understanding of what, how to go about teaching their children stuff. And that's not the kids' fault. How is that the kids' fault? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's a sad cycle. It all comes down to the older peers, you know, a lot of people yeah, you know, look man. up to the older peers. It's now a sad for, situation. Now for someone watching this, what would you say to them? Like, like what, what words would you say to them? Like motivation words? I'd say uh, explore. Mm. Um, have an open mind I'd say like keep positive I think like have a positive mindset on everything I think you know you want to explore the world you want to go places but you want to be positive doing it and you want to network you want to be able to meet new people mm. 
you know, I enjoy meeting people that don't even come from where I come from. Do you get it? Mm. They don't even know what Newham is. Yeah. Because those people, they got different experiences yeah. and they understand things different. And they've got a different mindset as well. Yeah. Do you get it? So for me, like, I will always say to young people, like, follow your passion, mm. but be ready to network and explore and meet new people and go down that route where you'll meet people and you'll learn new skills or you'll learn new things. And bro, like, I honestly believe you can achieve anything you want to achieve, you can achieve it because if you look at, say for example, yeah, you want to become a DJ. Yeah. You're going to end up spending more time around people that will then put you in that DJ position because you will go to the relevant places, whether it's online or in the real world, mm. you will put yourself in relevant circles and places where becoming a DJ is accessible in that, in that environment. That's right. Do you get it? I think, I think, I think also people need to hang around, uh, around people that's got the same mindset and the same energy that they have. Because yeah. if you're going to hang around with people that are, that are not going to motivate you, you're going to be like, you're going to be in the same level that, that, you know, they're going to be in. 100%. Man. So I think, I think your mindset needs to be strong. And I think you said that word quite a lot of times. I think networking is key to whatever yeah. you're doing. You have to network to be able to grow your platform and to un obviously understand other people's, you know, yeah. state of mind as well. And I really hope that, you know, young people, because especially in Newham, like when I've been mm. seeing online that some of the, the violence and yeah. the gang culture behind it, I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking, bro, none of this stuff is going to mean anything in a few years to you. You're going to act, you're going to become an older. Yeah. And if you don't grow out of it, you become washed. Yeah. Because that's the cycle. You become this washed up older that's still on road, brother. And like, come on, man. I call them. Uh, you have a youth, and the youth starts becoming a teenager. Yeah. And he starts looking at his dad and thinking, "Oh, what could have been, what should have been." Yeah, you know what dad, would have been. Dad's looking washed, and yeah, you, you know, the, the the youths are looking at you like, "Oh, this guy used to be a guy, but he ain't done nothing. He hasn't mm. left. Mm. No one cares." Like this whole new thing, it's, it's it's not our land, bro. Mm. You get it? Like we don't own new bro. Like yeah. yeah, I embrace where I come from. Yeah, and I'm like yeah, bro. I was born and raised in New York. I was born yeah. in New General and all of that stuff. Yeah. There's a whole world out there, bro. And I don't get how people don't see that. I think, you know, the, I think the thing is, like you said, I think it comes down to, you know, obviously the parents and obviously if it's not the parents' fault, so I think the children need guidance, teenagers need guidance. Yeah. But I think having you on this platform that other people that can relate to your background can relate to your upbringing. Yeah. Hopefully this, uh, this interview will inspire, you know, certain people yeah, it'll man. probably change their mindset and it could be like, oh, I hope wow. so, man. Because, I mean, that's something I'm very passionate about. Yeah. Young people, you know, becoming something of themselves. Yeah. Supported so many artists so early on in their careers, bro. And to see some of them, like, a lot of them actually in the charts, a lot of them doing world tours, bro, like, literally mm. touring different countries and, like, having fan bases globally. And I just look at it and, I, and it makes me so happy to see that, bro. You know, that I could have been of some help at some point in that yeah. person's journey. I'm not clout chasing because I don't go around talking about it and, and posting it up. Ah, oh, I helped this guy. Nah, yeah. It's nothing like that, bro. Yeah. That's part of my job. That's part of my journey as well as a DJ is to support people when they need it the most. No, what you're doing is big, man. And I think you're, I don't see you as a, just as a DJ. I see you as an influencer as well, that influences other people. Mm. So I, I, I fully respect you for coming on this platform. Um, where can people find you like on social media platforms yeah man just hit me up at DJ Lamb like UK on the Instagram I don't really use Twitter anymore it's too negative <laughs> okay but um, YouTube Lamb like TV and obviously BBC catch us on the BBC Asia Network I'm on, I'm on there every Wednesday night at 10pm doing um, a new Asian music show which is a new show that we just launched and Friday nights from 9pm is that's that's the turn up party show you get me that's when i go in on the mixing and guys man make bang. sure make sure you check out um his social media platforms and also the asian community check them out as well you, like you heard what you said um i want to play a quick game yeah yeah go on i'm just going to test your knowledge and geography and the cameraman it's up to you if you want to play as well yeah i'm, I'm just asking simple questions so obviously everyone knows that i make traveling content in general right what is the biggest spoken language in the world spanish no Okay, I got it wrong, isn't it? <laughs> what am I saying? 
English. You told me. Nah. Chinese English. Yeah, Chinese got Chinese got. You got to pick one country. English. Nah. Chinese. Chinese. Got the population. <laughs> what second? I don't. I think it's English. I think it's English or French, Spanish. maybe. I thought it'd be Spanish. No, 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 because China is the biggest population. Right, let me, let me, let me be a bit spontaneous. Right, what is um, the longest river in America? I hope I know this question as well. I ain't got a clue, man. It begins with an M. Stand south. That's, in That's in Africa. Yeah. Was it begin with M? Yeah. I ain't got a clue, bro. Mississippi. I was right. just going to say that. Because well. you said the river now. Right, listen, all right. So the river now, yeah? <laughs> the river now starts in Egypt or does it end in the Mediterranean Sea? Does it flow up or does it flow down the river now? So the river now, yeah, is the longest river in East Africa, yeah? Does it start in Egypt or does it end in the Mediterranean Sea outside of Egypt? So does it flow down or does it flow upwards? Yeah, I'd say up. You're right. Yeah. It flows up. So the river now starts in Uganda from the Lake Victoria and it flows yeah. all the way up and it finishes in the Mediterranean Sea. But right, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed um, enjoyed this podcast interview. Um, I really appreciate DJ Lamrat for coming on. I'm definitely going to put his, um, I'm definitely going to put your social media platforms in the descriptions. And um, like I said, bro, it was a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, man. Any time for you, my bro. Thank Come you, man. On, man. Thank you. And, uh, great stuff too, man. I appreciate it, man. And I, I wish you a lot of success and happiness. And uh, yeah, man, guys, just check it out. Take care. Bye.